What up, what up, YouTube Alex? Coming back at you with another StarCraft II cast. On the bottom right hand side of the map, we have our blue Protoss player Atlas. And on the top left hand side of the map, we have our red Terran player Undead. This is a master level game, so we are going to be seeing some strategies here that I expect we're not used to seeing. Some higher level strategies, so I'm excited to see what these players have in store for us today. If you're new to my channel, I do want you to know that my goal is to cast games from a wide range of skills, going from Bronze League all the way up to Diamond and Masters. Occasionally, I will be casting Grandmaster games just to spice, the, spice things up a bit, but I feel like... I feel like... The general ladder just doesn't get enough love, and I think it's really fun to see what, what strategies exist within the different leagues. So with that in mind, back to this game, I feel like this is a bit of a fast assimilator here. It did go down first before the gateway. So that gas is a little bit fast in my mind, but it also looks like Atlas is going to be going for a fast expansion here. And it does look like he's going to be throwing down this Nexus. So fast expansion for our blue protoss player and it does look like Terran is mining gas as well is going to be building a reaper and i expect this will be going across the map relatively quickly to throw down some harassment and also get some scouting information one thing about starcraft is if you know what's happening on the opponent's side of the map you are in a very good position a lot of StarCraft is reactive. If you know what your opponent's doing, you can react to it and possibly win yourself the game. Undead also scouting does see does see that this Nexus here is building for the opponent, so he realizes that there's no cheese coming from Atlas anytime soon. This is an interesting choice. I feel like typically, typically we don't see zealots being made. They're great. Char zealots are great, but just a zealot against a Terran player early game Marines can kite them as we're watching right now <laughs> Reapers can kite them the Zealot quite literally a useless unit in the early game of PVT they're great against Zerglings but Zerglings can only melee they can't really kite Zealots because they have to fight each other I wonder if this is a sacrificial Zealot because we do see an Adept on the production tab so I wonder if this Zealot is made to keep to keep the reaper away from the main base so that's actually kind of clever we do see a twilight council as well this is quite an early twilight council we don't have another gateway being built i wonder if this is going to be glaives or if this is going to be if this is going to be dts it doesn't look like atlas is really paying attention to his units though does lose this adept here as well so he did lose a zealot and an adept so <laughs> I was talking about high level play, but I think Atlas has his attention on other parts of the map here, and we do see a Dark Shrine, so this is going to be quite interesting. I wonder if he's going for a DT drop. We do have the Robo as well. We'll be able to get, we'll be able to get that Warp Prism and warp in or drop DTs in the main base of the Terran player. We have one Hellion here, but... Adepts are shockingly good against Hellions. This Hellion, though, great positioning by Undead. Going for... Going for the surround, it looks like. But Atlas able to micro this away. This Adept was able to chase away both... Both of the Reapers. Taking a look at the units last tab here. It's six workers killed so far. It looks like it's going to be possibly a couple more. This Adept shading in will try to take out this Hellion, but I expect these, these Reapers may try and take advantage of this positioning here. We do have the Warp Prism on the way. Dark Shrine is finished, and Warp Prism on the way to, to the main base. Eight workers killed for, for the Red Terran player here, but... I think I think this was spotted and at this point undead does see that this is going to be a DT drop will be able to react to this so undead playing a very strong game right now able to to spot effectively everything everything that this Protoss player has been doing does have the Raven out as well will give will give our Terran player detection here so these poor DTs 
they had a mission and they were not able to succeed worker count though is in favor of the protoss player but army count it's 16 army supply to two way in favor of the red terran player here so at this point atlas i feel like his whole build uh revolved around this dark shrine he will be able to convert this into archons if he so chooses he is going for the robotic spade this will give him the ability to create disruptors and colossi which at this point in the game will be very helpful going for the third nexus as well i don't disagree with that he is a little bit behind in production but as long as Terran decides to not hit, he has some time to catch up, especially with this greedy playstyle here going for going for the third base, which in the higher level leagues, this is pretty standard. I feel like it's actually almost even a little bit late uh, for a higher level game. It does look like our Terran player is going for the production this might turn into a two base all in in response to seeing the push for dts he does have a much stronger army supply atlas is catching up a little bit now it's 23 army supply to 15 still in favor of the Terran player but not by too much atlas doing a great job at macroing behind this Great positioning here by this Adept here as well. Will be able to chase away this Reaper. It does have one kill, but I don't think it got a kill in that engagement there. It must have had a kill from earlier in the game. And we do have a Disruptor that's rallied. How far is this thing rallied? All the way up here. We have another Disruptor already. So I think Atlas is trying to catch, trying to catch some of this army out of position. It will get a couple a couple marines here and we have the supporting the supporting zealots as well so that was actually a pretty good engagement able to catch able to catch Terran way out of position his army was just walking in a line to the protoss base here unfortunately losing that disruptor in a very fiery explosion i'd run this adept away there's no chance there's no chance it's going to survive we do have some charge zealots though and now these units are so much stronger than regular zealots charge zealots not only do they run faster but they just close the gap between the ranged units for for the terran player but i think i just think that that protoss is wasting a lot of units here he's throwing them away a little bit a little bit needlessly and as we can see it is almost 4,000 resources lost to 2,000 so about a 2,000 resources lost difference pretty big hit on those widow mines as well this raven mvp it's almost dead but it is spotting so so much of the cloaked units at this point i would like to see maybe maybe a push into the mineral lines behind all these uh all these engagements here because we don't have we don't have a turret here we could have some scans but if he saw that the terran army is out of position in the middle of his engagement he could run a couple dts to the back of the base and maybe try to snipe some scvs that would put him a little bit ahead it is a lot of workers though in favor of the blue protoss player it's 76 workers to 57 so even though he's behind an army supply, he's he's macroing up like a madman. He's going for a very greedy play here. I wonder, this looks like it's going to be a widow mine drop in two parts. Two parts of of the Protoss base. We have five kills on this widow mine. We have what is going to be, I think, another widow mine drop here. And another widow mine drop here. Undead going ham on these widow mine drops. And just like that, clearing about 20 workers, it's now suddenly 58 workers to 54 in favor of the Red Terran player. But keep in mind, even though he killed a lot of workers, he's still down two bases. So Atlas will be able to resupply himself quite a bit here. But at this point, I think Undead realizes he's probably got to hit him soon. We have another expansion coming out for Atlas. This is his fifth expansion. These Widow Mines, though, they're just chilling. I don't really know. Okay, no, we do have the Photon Cannons coming down. It looks like in both. Actually, all three. All three bases. 
all four bases, it looks like. Actually, I have trouble keeping up at this point. We have a big engagement here, though, for the Terran player. He will be able to take out this Nexus here. And I think at this point, we're looking at what is five army supply to 80 army supply way way in favor of the Terran player Atlas realizes this he sees that this is just way too big of an army to to fight against he was going for for the expansions which wasn't a bad choice but I think he could have stood to macro up a little bit behind this he did see I think he saw that this was more or less I don't want to call it a two base all in undead was really just reacting to what he saw but he, he needed to produce more units to keep up with the macro of the Terran player. And unfortunately, I think playing a little bit too greedy and costing himself the game. So very fun to watch. Master level game. If you enjoyed what you saw, please consider shooting me a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you want me to cast any of your own games, I will leave my email in the description below. And I'll see you guys on the next one.